We'll call this meeting to order. Please rise for the pledge. The pledge of allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Roll, please. Trustee Foley? Here. Trustee Madison? Here. Trustee Redfield? Yes. Here. Trustee Chandler? Here. Trustee Pridehorn? Here. Trustee Hazia? Here. Trustee Dilbert? Here. Trustee Astori? Present. Treasurer Woodsack? Here. Court Carrera? Approval agenda. I got one quick uh, adjustment. Actually, two. Um, I could take off. I could take off under new business. Take off F. Um, take off F, and then I feel it would make more logical sense um, to switch the order of E and D and E. So D would be E, E would be D. Yeah. I'm sorry. Say that again. For new, new business, take off F and. <coughs> Change D to E oh, and E to D. D and E. Okay, good thing. That was logical. Sounds good. And then we have a few things. I guess your computer was down. Yeah, I apologize for that. No, it's your fault. Um, under unfinished business, Ron Smith contract. And uh, under new business, just an update on the Ways and Needs Committee meeting that was held last week. Yeah, that would be fine under new business, wouldn't it? And um, under, you have cemetery rates. We'll just leave it at that, but I also have a, dis a discussion about the cemetery. If we can include that in the same thing. Okay, sure. Okay. Any other additions, additions? Hearing none. Motion in order. Make a motion to approve the agenda as amended. Second. It's been properly moved and supported that the agenda be approved as amended. Any questions on the motion? All those in favor? Aye. Opposed? <coughs> motion carried. Public comments on agenda. Hi, my name is Sheila Manning for the record. Um, I just kind of wanted to touch on the, uh, the marijuana issue for a second. Um, I think the guy was a little worried for my because he was nice to be heard. So marijuana was really offering, like saving medication. And that's the way it needs to be looked at. Um, for someone who has med many medical issues, um, I'm asking and urging you guys to please help provide your residents with local access to these life-saving, life-changing medications that a lot of people have come to rely on. Okay, I don't know. They're medications, and that's what I need. I hope you guys will see that. Okay. Thank you. Any other public comment on the agenda? My name is Frank Malone. Uh, I've lived in Romeo and Ray Township for my entire life. Uh, had chronic back pain for probably 10 plus years. Uh, I've been prescribed to severe pain medication, which hasn't touched my pain, but did a number on my internals. This is the first time in a decade that I've been pain-free and narcotic-free, thanks to CBDs and medical cannabis. I help the people of Mother Earth Natural Health build their store, and I'm currently working there part time. My family is currently shopping for a home. We were going to move to Warren to be closer to the medicine that we need, but since this store has arrived, we are currently looking for a home in New Haven. <coughs> this is medicine that people need, in some cases, to survive. And I hope that the township and the people of New Haven will have us here to help. Thank you. Hi, I'm Paul Gibbons. 
Uh, I am an attorney. I'm a marijuana compliance attorney. And for those of you that were here at the township before, you heard me speak, you've seen my presentation. Um, for those of you who weren't here and didn't receive my presentation, I have a copy uh, that I'm going to give to Chris, and you can have it. Um, I am the compliance attorney for Mother Earth, and Mother Earth is here to ask you this. Let the citizens decide. You're, go you're going to let the citizens decide on four of the five licenses. Let them decide on all of them. There's, no, there's absolutely no reason to exclude one of the five licenses from the citizens' consideration. In part because there are citizens here today asking me to put it on the ballot. They want it on the ballot. People who live here want it on the ballot. Um, the expense for the city of having um, four versus five of the licenses on the ballot is, is, is insignificant. There is no difference in the city's cost to do this. And so what I would tell you is, and tell the community, is that I brought, um, I actually brought a picture of a medical marijuana dispensary from the community where I lived in Colorado um, to show you what a non-eight mile classy medical marijuana dispensary looks like. Um, I really don't need this though, because you have one in your community right now. Mother Earth, the way it looks right now is exactly what a medical marijuana community uh, dispensary provisioning center will look like in your community. So I don't need this because all you have to do is drive by Mother Earth and go see um, what is possible for, for how a dispensary will look. And for those of you who are here who are going to vote on this, here's what I would tell you is that there's a lot of information to be obtained on this when you make up your mind in how a dispensary will look in your community and how these will look in your community. And as a marijuana compliance attorney, I can tell you that people don't go to the expense of hiring me and investing multiple millions of dollars in these businesses to allow medical marijuana out the back to endanger your children. No medical marijuana business person is in this room right now to endanger your children. They're here to do this in a safe and compliant way, which is why they employ medical marijuana compliance attorneys and accountants. And so I would tell the, the citizens of New Haven who have any interest in learning about this, go to Mother Earth. That's what a dispensary looks like in your community. If you feel safe driving by Mother Earth, that's exactly what it's going to look like in a year if it's a licensed dispensary. Thank, Thank you. you. <coughs> Any other questions on the agenda? <coughs> I have a question. Uh, Madam Richard, you bring one is on the medical marijuana proposal. Uh, you have held two uh, town hall meetings in the past to get the citizens' input, so forth. Out of them, Meeting, nothing has been accomplished whatsoever. I mean, they just you know they accomplished nothing. It's up to you as a council to either put it amongst yourself and somebody raise it up and take the heat on everybody's afraid of a recall. If you don't want it to step forward, put it out as a measure for the citizens to vote on. It's the only fair way to do it. Item number two uh, on your DPT, DPW Summer Help. I believe we employ enough DPW workers in this town that we don't need to start employing more part-time work. You know, are we going to try to put a DPW worker at every intersection? Because that's basically... I don't know, I think we're out, out doing it on DPW workers. Because they can't cut grass out so the way to save with money was to just keep hiring more workers. Thank you. Here in Welsh with Mother Earth. Um, we opened, I heard a grand opening last weekend. Um, I had an overwhelming response from New Haven residents asking when there was going to be action taken. And then I found out that this was going to be a discussion point on the agenda tonight. I ask that you give the residents an opportunity to, to make that decision. If, if you're not, the board's not comfortable with doing that, I understand. 
let the residents decide because I think the residents are going to want to make a decision, you know, have an input on it. I think that'd be a great way to do it. So, and I do encourage and welcome everybody to come up to our store. You can see exactly what it would look like if it were to be approved and approved use. We've spent a lot of time and effort, all those locally sourced materials. It is a nice, calming, beautiful atmosphere, and I encourage everybody to come at least take a look so they can get a better idea of what we're talking about. Thank you. Based on um, March's minutes that I read through, I was, I'm a little new at this and was quite surprised to see this come to light. My biggest question to you as well as the board is what kind of background check is done on the owner of the particular business being open number one and uh, Hold on. this is not a back and forth okay my and that would be my my first before i, I could even vote on it i need to understand what the process is prior to that business owner coming in um, just say I was going to open a beauty salon and I think, um, do we require some kind of background check to make sure I'm working with the public and I don't have some kind of a, I don't know, background? I don't know what that it entails. So I think I would be really interested prior to that to look into that type of thing and see. Who, who, who's opening it, number one? Who is the owner is what I want to know. And what is his background? And where did he come from? And that kind of thing is what I want to know as a, as a community person. Thank you. Any other questions? Oh, thank you. My name is Rosanne Jolie, and I'm a medical marijuana industry consultant. And I've consulted all over the country from coast to coast. And I'm here to ask you to please put this on the ballot. And I'm asking you, as somebody who is a believer, uh, the human backbone has 22 gifts. <coughs> 12 of mine are ruptured or um, bulged. And I am not on any medication from any pharmaceutical. I am not on any opioids at all. I am on is, is non-THC CBDs. So I'm a believer. <coughs> but I'm asking you to put it on the ballot for a number of reasons. We all know about the tax money that comes in. But if 100 people a week come to one dispenser in your community, then, and they spend $10 somewhere else at the gas station, buying breakfast, lunch, or dinner, going to a grocery store. Think about the extra money that comes into your town. I also want to back up what some of these people said and what you were shown, that most of these places are very upscaled, what I would call gentrified, and I've seen them from coast to coast. They're beautiful. To answer the question about who gets these licenses, I'll let the lawyer talk a little bit more. When we're talking a background check, from the FBI, fingerprints and everything, okay? Um, I do represent somebody here in your community who's looking, who is a business owner, who is looking to open up a uh, grow. And for people to go all the way to Warren for their medication, it's not safe, it's not fair, it's unnecessary. I also know that from coast to coast, when I work with these people in communities like you, if they put it on the ballot, 95% of the time, the people vote for it. And that's because the people use the product. And they do not want to go to Detroit. They don't want to have to go outside their community. The money comes in from people who build these places, maintain them, contractors, <coughs> full-time and part-time jobs, employers, and it comes from the tax money as well. So I'm asking that you please consider putting on the bill for the people of this community and not just the people who use the medical marijuana, but for the community in general. What I'm finding is that across the country, people benefit from it across the board in more ways than one. And it's either your community that benefits from it or a neighboring community. Thank you. Any other questions on the agenda? <laughs> Approval of minutes for February minutes, I think we're a minute. I just added a dollar figure. Just a dollar figure. I make a motion to 
to, I'm sorry, motion in order? Yes. I make a motion to approve February 12, two, February 2017's council meeting, meeting minutes as presented. Second. The property movement supported that the minutes of February 2017 be accepted as presented. Any questions on the motion? All those in favor? Aye. Opposed? The minutes of April 2017. I make a motion to approve the April 2017 council minutes as presented. Second. It's been moved and supported that the April minutes be approved as presented. Any questions on the motion? All those in favor? Aye. Opposed? Aye. Motion carried. Consent agenda. <coughs> I make a motion to approve the consent agenda as presented. Second. And moving and supported that the consent agenda be approved as presented. Any questions on the motion? Roll, please. Uh, Mr. Pavoli? Yes. Mr. Kramer? Yes. Trustee Meissen? Yes. Mr. Rickerfold? Yes. Mr. Chandler? Yes. Trustee Easia? Yes. Mr. Hilbert? Yes. Now we're going to get around to some good stuff. <laughs> if I could have the clerk. Chief Brazil. This is where she, where she is. We're going to do this out front for the. Uh, Move this out of the way. I'll bring it this way so that the video audio. I want to see her. Welcome. <laughs> okay. First of all, friend of the fire chief. I say your name. I wrote her name. Do you solemnly swear? Do you solemnly swear? That I'll uphold and support the Constitution. That I'll uphold and support the Constitution. And bylaws in the name of the Fire Department. And the bylaws in the name of the Fire Department. The Constitution of the State of Michigan. The Constitution of the State of Michigan. And the United States of America. The United States of America. And I'll fulfill the duties of my office. And I'll fulfill the duties of my office. To the best of my ability. To the best of my ability. So help me God. So help me God. This is. Daniel Steer. 
Do you solemnly swear? Do you solemnly swear? Do I uphold and support the Constitution? Do I uphold and support the Constitution? Do the laws of the Union Fire Department? The laws of the Union Fire Department. Constitution of the State of Michigan? Constitution of the State of Michigan. And the United States of America? And the United States of America. And I fulfill the duties of my office? And I fulfill the duties of my office. To the best of my ability? To the best of my ability. So help me God. So help me God. If I may say, I feel um, extremely confident in the two gentlemen who have assumed these positions, and I think that the village of New Haven can rest assured that the um, fire protection that they will receive in, in case they ever need it will be um, second to none. Good luck, gentlemen, and ladies. Budget amendments. Um, Mr. Ryan Smith and Sandra are here. Uh, we received the uh, full printout of the budget amendments, and you've also uh, received a summary that highlights and is going to to follow um, the necessary amendments to the 16-17 um, budget. And if you have any questions, um, they're both available. during the year that you don't know about. So all of us that have that has a budget on face value is stuff that you have approved in council and have uh, affected the budget during the year. So these budget amendments every basically reflect what you have, all of you know what happened during the year. Like we had some um, capital outlay, we had project STE stuff like that. So they all affected the budget so we have to have budget amendments at the end of the fiscal year. In that said, uh, that answer your question you want more yeah, information. So what were some of the particular some of the particular was you hired me. Uh, we needed extra support for the audit. We had capital outlay for a fire truck and some equipment. We had, <coughs> that was some of the stuff that was with general fund. Um, highway fund, we had the STD project out here for the roads for the um, division, the Lady Main Street. Uh, new computers, new computers, we made deposit on new computers. 
And we all saw that we can have the basic users information. Um, as you can see with the blue light blinking light up there for the Wi-Fi, so everybody should have Wi-Fi today. Okay. Uh, what else happened? Signs. Signs. We got the new sign out there in front on Main Street and Bradshaw. That's the bulk of it. That you know. So it's all stuff that you have all approved, and that's what the budget was for basically about. And yes, we had some um, salary increases and stuff like that because we <coughs> audit increases, legal increases, uh, issues with the trailer park. We had legal uh, issues going there. That was an increase. <coughs> Uh, we had some. Else? Can I make, just make a quick comment, at least to, to answer your question a little further? So there are three parts to the budget process. There's the budget, which is the authorization of expenditures, and there's the appropriations, which is allocating revenue and other sources to pay for those expenditures. And so there's two parts this many, revenue and expenditures. So no. We'll see some changes to revenues as well. Some based on actual results that weren't anticipated in April of 2016. And some uh, reallocations, for example, the building fund did not need any transfer to the general fund because it collected more revenue than anticipated. So the only thing that struck accord with me, and this is kind of the question of where are we at with the audits, because the state of Michigan sales tax was obviously with them from the previous year, so at the tune of 55000 based on what you're telling us here. Where are we at currently with the audit process? Um, can I slip up to me? Sure. Yeah. So the, the March 15 audit is in process, but just to clarify, the, the uh, money being withheld from the state of Michigan isn't just the audit. It's 2000, uh, it's March 13 audit deficiencies, it's March 14 audit deficiencies, it's prior S65. Okay, so audit's that. plural. Yeah. Yes. Gotcha. I'm sorry? Audit's plural. That's what was written in the okay. statement. Okay. So um, the March 15 audit is um, substantially complete. There are 10 or 11 items that the auditors have requested. <coughs> Uh, most of which um, is complete, some of which there's, there's three or four items that require substantial accounting and analysis, primarily related to the water and sewer funds, which um, affects the deficit elimination plans, which could affect future audits if there are deficiencies because um, Often auditors will, if there are too many adjustments required by a audit firm, they consider that an accounting deficiency. And so the whole idea is to eliminate as many deficiencies as possible. Um, so that's where, that's where it is right now. My office expects to send that item, those 10 or 11 items uh, to the audit firm within a week. It depends how the analysis and the accounting goes. Um, some of the negotiations with Brookside play into it. Mm -hmm. That keeps getting deferred sure. because because of um, allowances that may need to be recorded right. with respect to those receivables, and um, that plays into it. The 10 or 11 deficiencies, did you say that was just out of the 13, 14, or is that across the board out of the 13, 14, and 15? Well, oh, I'm sorry, no. There are 10 or 11 items that the auditors need to um, proceed with the March 15 audit. The March 15? Those aren't deficiencies. Okay. They're just uh, items that they need information, evidence, records, accounting, that kind of thing. And most of it is related to the sewer and water? Is that? My, my no, following. The, the three or four difficult ones that are uh, mm. uh, most time consuming are related to the water and sewer funds. Okay. There, were, there were significant changes within the water and sewer funds fiscal year ending March of 15. Correct. I, you know, I mean, significant. Right. You know, went to a monthly billing. Uh, some of the things with the mobile home park. Right. 
of changeover of media needs. There were significant issues there. So, um, so what are we looking in those those ones that need more investigation, if you will, or need more analysis? I call it analysis. analysis. Okay, so let's say analysis. What are they looking for specifically? What what is what is the time restraint per se on those specific three or four items? Why why did those take longer than say the seven other items? What makes those stand out other than going to the monthly billing and obviously some issues with the, the developments in the, in the village and, and even raising some of those rates. Comparing what actually happened to what the auditors are suggesting um, be recorded okay. and adjusted for. Okay. And that's gotta go, you've gotta go through every single one of those from each month. Uh, we have to go through the year. Okay. And we have to go through the invoice. The two large invoices, sure. to the mobile home part. Mm -hmm. So, but is without, it broken without, down in some duration, or is it just these invoices exist and that's what you guys are trying to analyze? Uh, yeah, the invoices exist it's in the form of letters, oh. and the the auditors are suggesting an adjustment based on what's occurred thus far and what payments have come in thus far. And, and, and we are uh, analyzing that to not only understand what they're suggesting and recommending, but it, it needs to be right, it needs to be accurate. Sure. And, and they could be wrong. If we had a settlement today, we, that, that would tell us a lot sure. about what to record. Right. So we can put in what we think is going to be the adjustments, and we can still send the audit, audit up with the adjustments, correct? We don't have to wait on, per se, a settlement. No, we, we can at least kind of match the numbers, get a pretty good idea no, no. of where we're at, and then send it up with the adjustments. That's correct. But please remember that the deficit of elimination plan could be affected. Sure. We, we, we proposed a plan to the state, and it, it so we're trying nice, to abide by that plan. It's well. nice for the March 15 audit to coincide. If, if we can't, then then we can't, and we and we. We book an allowance for doubtful accounts and, and move on to March 16. But you think you'll be able to send something up next week? Uh, I hope to be able to send it all Perfect. within a week. And by the way, it's not the, the auditors prefer, when they make a request, they prefer to all be sent at one time instead of piecemeal. Makes sense. It, and I've been audited for 30 years, so I know where they're coming from, and I can appreciate that request. So. Yeah. That, that's why they haven't received any of the 11 items. Okay. <clears throat> sure. You so, have any questions? So the bulk of the amendments presented here, those are more about the difference between actual and estimated as opposed to accounting for the, the funds properly. You said before everything was going to general fund and then you had to make adjustments. So this is actually a difference between what we estimated to happen and what actually happened? Correct. Okay. You went that far out. Uh, just a general question for Senator. During the year, if any fund goes below uh, what was budgeted, do we wait until the end of the year to amend that budget or is it supposed to be brought up and amended as it's uh, discovered? It can be both ways. I think since you have me in place and we have, I'm looking at it more, I can bring it up more and bring it to your attention and we can do budget amendments during the year also. I mean, we don't have to wait until the end of the year too. Of course, next year we'll probably have a better handle on the budget. We can um, start doing process in December, not in March, <laughs> something like that. So, <laughs> so we'll, we'll have a better, we'll be on a better schedule this come, upcoming year to get this up on time. And we have the information to you. And when you guys have a, um, yes. something big come, come along and you improve and stuff like that, we can do a budget amendment. We just have to make a motion to do a budget amendment at that time. So okay, we can do so that going through time. the Uniform Budgeting and Accounting Act, and it seemed to indicate that as these deficits come up, 
the amendment should be brought up in front of council to have it uh, to wait. So we can do that. And just to let you know, part of the Ways and Means Committee, when we met, mm -hmm. we're going to meet quarterly, okay. and that might be something that we could talk to you about, is sure. if there's any amendments, we could bring it up in front of council to sure. kind of keep an eye on it. Uh -huh. And not uh, have to do this once the year is closed. Yes, ma'am. Anybody else? I think we was asking if you need an amendment. I agree with you. An amendment for the expenditures and an amendment for the for the revenue. Yeah, just one time. Any other questions? You know, the one thing that I did like about uh, reading these 14 or 24 pages or whatever, it's come cross-eyed. And I like this uh, summary, which gives me a simpler idea of what's going on. No. And um, even the uh, last comment about the conclusion, which I was, you know, pleasantly surprised to see that, uh, in spite of all the amendments and and shortfalls and whatnot, that our fund balance was actually up. Uh, so. Well, it doesn't look like it from a month to month. <laughs> We're actually doing yeah, pretty good. So, that being said, the motion in order. Make a motion to <coughs> accept the budget amendments as presented. Okay. And probably move and support it so that the budget amendment be accepted as presented. Any questions on the motion? Yeah, Roll, please. Trustee Mackerel? Yes. Trustee Nyson? Yes. Trustee Capoli? Yes. Trustee Chandler? Yes. Trustee Hazia? Yes. Trustee Primer? Yes. President Gilbert? Yes. Cinco update or Cinco conversation. Um, I sent out an email a couple weeks ago that the estimated cost to the building, um, and these are still estimates, for the Cinco repair is approximately $566,000. <clears throat> And the Dream Commissioner's Office was sending out the uh, estimated cost to the 11 communities, uh, giving them an the opportunity to pay it up front if they wish to. If not, then it will be part of the bonding action that the county will undertake. Um, and in talking with Mr. Ryan Smith and uh, Ms. Cadell, um, they strongly recommend against paying it up front. Uh, the bonding um, same that estimated would cost us approximately twenty-two thousand a year um, for the next twenty-five years. Interesting. Okay, Kevin Bending. Yes. So many. Some of you may have noticed in the paper yesterday about the lawsuit that was filed. There was a conference call yesterday afternoon um, with all the communities regarding um, the bonding issue. And there were letter, it, letters issued to the attorneys for all the communities involved regarding uh, basically we have to give a letter that indicating that there's no lawsuits prohibiting um, the issuing of the bonds to the bonding company. It's kind of a standard practice. Um, during that phone conversation, kind of a jaw-dropping situation with Sterling Heights announced that by 3 o'clock that afternoon they were going to file a lawsuit. There was nobody on that telephone conference with all the communities involved that, that knew, had any knowledge of that or knew that that was coming. So basically, the, 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 the Pazinski and company that handles the bonding for it has said at this point that they're going to regroup and figure out what, what they're going to do. But as far as they're concerned, right, you know, as of today, the bonding probably will not go through with the lawsuit pending. 
they don't know if that was the intent of the city or not, but um, that's it. There's still a whole lot of knowledge lacking as to the purpose of the lawsuit, whether it's based on the percentage, whether it's the, you know, who's to pay and how. Um, but right now the bonding, uh, Budzinski and company is, is saying that the bonding is kind of on hold until they can figure out whether or not they can actually get the bonds to go through. Kind of a last minute, I mean, it was literally yesterday in a phone conference at two o'clock and um, announcement at three, and I think maybe some of you saw it late last night or early this morning, so. I think we have to, to say, you know, that I've been attending the uh, mid-meetings and uh, which we had one yesterday. And last month's meeting, I think Sterling Heights made it quite clear of their intent. <laughs> I was being polite. <laughs> they, I mean, they, they read into the record at the board meeting uh, what their claims are. So when they actually filed after the mid meeting yesterday, I was not surprised. Yeah. yeah. I mean, they, they made it clear. I think it was more of an issue of the, from the bonding company's perspective of they were ready to roll and, and yeah. you know, we kind of put a stop to it. Right, these bonds were supposed to be sold the 17th of this month. And in talking to the commissioner and her deputy, it's not going to happen as it stands right now. And one of the biggest fears is that they, you know, while the work is being done and bills are coming in, that the initial $20 million that was loaned from the Board of Commissioners is about ready to run out. And they haven't received $5 million from the state of Michigan yet. So while I'm confident that the contractor will continue to work, but at some point I'm sure he's going to have to, <laughs> he's going to need some cash to pay his employees. <laughs> so that's where we're at. But the, um, like I said, the, the uh, bill that we received was for 566000 which was our apportionment guesstimated um, for this uh, sinkhole repair, and that does not include, that's just talking about the immediate repair, um, and it didn't include the additional $6 million that was asked for yesterday to extend the repair area an additional 3,000, I think it was 3,000 feet um, east and west of the actual collapse. And then at some point in 18, once the uh, uh, videotaping is completed, they will probably want to come back if they see enough defects in the whole 17 mile interceptor they will probably want to come back in 18 and um, ask for another bonding issue for a total repair of the whole system. <coughs> so, there's... It's, I was going to ask how they came up with this point of 808. Is that what Sterling Heights is also... No, Sterling Heights, um, they're like uh, 31%. I mean, are they... So because of how they came about that amount? Because I was going to ask how did, how did they come up with the amount that we paid point eight oh eight seven. Uh, I don't want to speak with Sterling Heights, so I'm going to be real careful here. Okay. Okay. Uh, so that'll be a general question. How did they come up with point eight oh eight seven for New Haven? It's based on a five year flow. Okay. Five year flow. That's our that's our percentage point eight oh eight. And Sterling Heights is something like thirty one yeah. point something. <coughs> Um, you mentioned that uh, you said something about twenty twenty two thousand dollars a year would be about would yes. be our cost, and that's um, with or without. Uh, that is that the upfront cost if we were paid off upfront, or is that the if we were to bond it out? Uh, the bonding, uh, the the, the uh, percentage that they had in mind. Uh, I don't want to be misquoted, but it was a relatively good number. Um, 2.5 percent, something like that. Um, that was just doing some some simple math, 566 divided by 25 or whatever it is, and we come up to, you know. Do we know how much that's going to cost um, per year? Like, what's the differences 
uh, for the village as a whole, whether we pay it up front or whether we um, bond it up. No. No. Uh, I guess the, the next question was going to be how much how much difference would it be broken down per household, but we don't. Uh, no, we're we're I'm guesstimating. Uh, I think it was uh, three dollars approximately three dollars per month. Uh, something between thirty and thirty-five per year. Don't don't forget in that calculation. There's no adjustment for time value or money. Either, so. <coughs> I mean, the number, the number doesn't increase because you're paying over time. It's the same number whether you paid over time or you paid up front. What was the interest? Oh, even if you paid up front, we're not getting a discount off it because the Correct. Oh. Mm -hmm. So there's nothing Correct. to be gained if you paid up front. Well, you save the interest. Yeah. Well, yeah. The interest is something. Yeah. 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 But there's no, my point is there's no adjustment for the time value of money, meaning um, you know, there's no discount for paying right. through yeah. No, no, right. no. And while we're talking about sewer, let me just uh, share another possibility with you. Um, and the numbers haven't been fixed yet. Is that they're guesstimating that uh, most communities will we will see a double-digit increase in uh, sewer charges from the county, and it is guesstimated that the village of New Haven is going to be approximately ten percent. <clears throat> and that's based on the mid budget and, and all the things that they've uh, calculated in place. But those numbers aren't aren't set in stone yet. So that's fifty cents. Yeah, whatever ten percent is. Um, mm. That's not ten percent of the overall bill. It would cost. Yeah, because we get a flat. <coughs> our bill is a flat, mm -hmm. and so it would cost us approximately an additional four thousand dollars a month. Mm -hmm. But to Trustee Brentmore's point, the 10% is based off of specifically the sewer portion. Sewer. Not the interest. Sewer. Because we don't want the residents to think right. they're already leaving in droves over the water bills. We don't want to speed up the process. Yeah. <laughs> and the uh, Great Lakes Water Authority, they're a couple, three months behind in calculating the final <clears throat> uh, water charges. Uh, we should have had them already, and they have not established the final water charges which are due to go into effect. Uh, we have a guesstimate that they receive, that we receive, but it's not a final um, set in stone number. And they're supposed to go in place in July. Were those the figures we got in September and it was the raw figures in the paper? The raw figures, yeah. <clears throat> okay. Yeah. Okay. yeah so it's like 7% or something. Yeah. yeah. And we're hoping that our actual will, will go down. But like I said, you know, as our uh, commodity rate went down, our fixed rate went up. So we're hoping that it's a wash where there's actually no increase, no overall increase. <coughs> Any other questions on the sinkhole or anything related to it? You said 22 percent. How many? Uh, how many years was that for? For the bond? Uh, 25. <coughs> Just did you have a question? <coughs> What's that? No, it was good. Oh, okay. It was good. The stormwater cleaning contract. How we want to come forward? <coughs> Okay, um, the, the stormwater cleaning contract, um, I think as most of you are aware, um, a couple of years ago we entered, uh, the village received a SAW grant um, to provide for the uh, preparation of an asset management plan for the storm sewer system in the village. Uh, to date, we've done uh, inspections of the uh, existing storm mad balls and put them on a, like a GPS system. And the next step, to this process is uh, to clean and televise all the storm sewers that are 20 years in age and older. And part of the grant, it was uh, an amount of $193,363 that was allocated towards the televising. Um, so uh, 
we received on uh, last a week ago Thursday, we received bids for the project. Uh, we did only receive uh, one bid. Um, that was despite the fact we even pushed the bid back uh, for a week and sent out um, copies of the proposal to 11 bidders who had picked up plans for a project in a neighboring community. Um, we did have seven people pick up the plan, but only one submitted the bid. And there were two, two parts to the bid. One was for the cleaning and televising. And the second, we did an alternate um, for repair and reconstruction of store manholes. And part of the information we um, were able to obtain on these manholes was from the visual inspections that we did. And I guess part of the reason we, we did it is to maybe get an estimate of what it was what we had um, maybe needed to be repaired in the future. And, uh, uh, and then the, um, the other, I guess the other thing we wanted to see if there was a possibility that maybe if there were some real hazardous structures that we could repair as, as we needed to when the contractor was in town. Um, based on the bids that we received, uh, the bid for the televising and cleaning portion of the uh, contract came in about, it was about 10% below estimate. It was at around 177000 But the, uh, in the bid for the um, rehab portion of the contract came in at, uh, I think it was 661000 So after discussions with the uh, Department of Public Works, I guess our feeling is that uh, we would go with the televising portion of the project at this time. And then once we had the televising done, and um, we also had the, um, the you know, the, we had the bad holes inspections to work from. Part of, part of the grant also is to do a, uh, a capital improvement program or, you know, projection as to the repair of the system. And so um, we thought that it would be best to not do any of the storm sewer improvements at this time. Uh, Marcus had indicated if there was some that absolutely needed to be uh, done, he could possibly do those through the Department of Public Works. Did we anticipate the rehab coming back that high? The, some of the prices are high, which is another reason, you know, because we, we had even thought, well, maybe we could get 10 structures done or whatever, but those prices seem relatively high, so we, you know, we, we thought it was going to be a bigger number, and it's not covered in the grant. The, the uh, televising is so it was, it was a little bit kind of to see what the market was out there and sure what it was going to cost okay so we were kind of just getting our feet wet a little bit yeah testing the waters yeah. getting some temperature gauges mm -hmm. okay. okay i can come up with some more <laughs> <laughs> we're done um of that one hundred and seventy-seven thousand, how much of that is covered by the saw grant well the the total saw grant was three hundred and Thirty-seven thousand, and I think thirty-three thousand of that, roughly, is uh, the village. So it, I guess so. It's uh, basically like ten percent, but it's it's over the whole grant, and not just over the cleaning and televising. We don't have any dire situations with our manholes or sewers at this point. Do we have, or do we have a couple that kind well, of stand up? We have a few that are in rough shape. Yes. How would we take care of those? At this point, we would have to find the time to uh, cut out the structure. Um, re re if it, the lock is failing, we would have to re block it, re mud it, pour around the grade again. And, you know, so we have to. So at this point, they're just in a monitoring phase? Monitor, try to do what we can. You know, we shorthand it, but, you know, we have to do what we can. So we're trying to plan to attack whenever. So I guess that's my question. We don't necessarily want to wait for another saw grant for a couple of these issues, no. right? So no. will we anticipate you possibly or Tom bringing us something in which we may have to address yes. some of the dire situations that we already have right now? Yes, and there, there's also some companies out there who will just uh, reline, do a relining program. Okay. And it will be tremendously lower in price. So Tom and I are already speaking about contacting those companies also. And that's what the, the base, part of the basis of the SAW grant is to, you know, it covers the inspection of the manholes, it covers the televising, and based on that, we'll review the data and be 
I mean, make recommendations as to what needs to be done immediately, you know, maybe a 10-year plan or a 20-year plan? No, I mean, it makes sense. The reason they want us to do this is so we, you know, they give us the money, so we take it upon ourselves to go in and look at what, what is the issue, right? right? What, what structurally do we need to address right away? What can we wait? What can we do to a capital outlay program? All of that. I mean, it makes perfect sense as to why the SAW grant would cover that. So it motivates us to go in there and try and find and, and rectify these situations. It's just, can we now an anticipate that these are going to start coming in fairly soon, is I guess my question. Well, the televising is supposed to be completed in the next uh, 50 days. Okay. And so after that time is when we'll do the balance of the work included in the SAW grant and bring that report back to you as to what the recommendations would be. Okay. So we could still have a little bit left over in the SAW grant to address? It's possible. I mean, there's so not going to be a lot, but... Sure. But it'll at least get us started. Yeah. Okay. Is this SAW grant a use it or lose it type situation? If we don't apply it toward these certain things, we got to give it back? Uh, well, they, they only reimburse you for what you expend. Yeah. So... So we didn't get the money yet. We get, we get the money after we yeah, pay ourselves, submit, submit the bill to yeah. And we submitted one request for reimbursement so far. That's 77000 So if I'm reading the alternate bid right, uh, remove and replace manholes, they have on here eight of them. Of those eight, which ones are the, how many of them are in rough shape and then how many of them should be replaced like tomorrow? Do we have any that are like that? There's no tomorrow manhole, so to speak, but there's a lot that need to be worked on. Okay. Yes. <coughs> so what's the pleasure on the uh, televising and cleaning in the amount of $177,349.70? That's Yes. What is the difference between the 177 figure and then the 193 on the cover letter? The 193 was the original estimate, and that's also what's included in the SAW grant to do that. You know, some some of these items could could change. You know, there's we have like items for cleaning and there's heavy cleaning. And so some, there's a, maybe some little adjustment there depending on what you encounter when you actually go in to do the cleaning. And the cleaning would be done first and then uh, after that then we would televise them. So that was the engineer's estimate of the job. Yes, and that was what was applied for for the cleaning and televising grant. <coughs> And when we say the, the 177,000 uh, low bid amount, I mean that's based off of the one bid that we received yes. already. And we, we think, based on, say, our estimate, we think those prices are consistent with what the value of work is to be. So you're recommending that, yes, we do spend the 177 for cleaning and Yes. And just that at this point in time. Yes. Once so, if we authorize this, does the money come out of the general fund and then we get reimbursed, or is this? Yeah. So we're taking a 177 hit to the uh, balance right now. Yeah. And do we have a time frame when we could anticipate some return for the software? Well, let's say we've had the one submittal. Um, and I think the, I, I would expect that reimbursement to be relatively soon. And then the, um, we're allowed to submit on a monthly basis. So I guess as the you know, monthly as the funds are expended, we'd be receiving <coughs> reimbursements. And I think we would anticipate receiving the reimbursements within the next 30 days or so after, after that. So but it's going to be like, it's like a one month turnaround. I, that's, that's <coughs> I understand it today. Would and we have to right. dedicate the entire amount now or just this little bit down? Well, you have to award the contract for the full 177. Right, but they're not going to bill us for 177. It's going to be as they do the work? Yes. Okay. But if they get it done, 
I mean, it's going to be only two, basically two months that they should have to work on. So it's about two days. Yeah, it's about two days. Is there going to be any disruption to service for residents and uh, stakeholders in the village? There shouldn't be. I mean, if anything, as they clean, it may be better. <laughs> I mean, you're going to have the back trucks and then, you know, but other than that, they're not going to be tearing up the streets or anything. But they're not going to turn on their faucet and nothing comes up? No. Let's just go on. Let's go on. This is storm. Yeah, yeah, I got it. This is storm. I just, right after this. <laughs> okay. What's your pleasure? I make a motion to adopt a resolution to tentatively award a construction contract for the 2017 storm sewer cleaning and CCTV investigation section one only in the amount of $177,349.70. Second. Did we, can we include the company's name? Should we include the company's name? Yes. Uh, oh. So the contractor, DVM Utilities Incorporated. I'll still second. We probably move and support it that we award the storm cleaning and televising in the amount of $177,349.70 to DVM Utilities. Sterling Heights. Any questions on the motion? Yeah. Roll, please. Trustee Capone? Yes. Trustee Chandler? Yes. Trustee Magnuson? Yes. Trustee Maxwell? Yes. Trustee Aziak? Yes. Trustee Primor? Yes. President Dover? Yes. Uh, DPW's summer help. Um, Marcus Martin. And this actually should say summer help and um, full time help. Yes. <coughs> um, actually, when it says summer help, we're actually keeping it at two people. So we're replacing the two that we have, and we want to move one of our current uh, summer helpers that's been on for approximately five years into a full time role. And in saying that, these uh, the part-time summer help will now only work 32 hours, not 40, and it will only be kept on for 14 weeks, I believe, instead of all year round. Um, in doing this, it will enable us to uh, do some of these catch basins like we just spoke of, and try to tackle other things, and the summer help can cut grass and, and weed with maintain hydrants. and maintain hydrants, paint them, and things of that sort. Um, trim bushes, and it frees up more of the full time work to be done with the heavy machinery and things of that sort. So that's what I'm proposing to the council today. I had taken this to the Ways and Means the other night just to give them a, a a little heads up, and I, I don't have the sheet in front of me, and I don't know if anyone was waving these. I was looking for it, they bring it today. <laughs> I have it wrong in the summer, but um, because one part timer has taken another job elsewhere, uh, we were proposing that we move the remaining part timer to a full time position and then just bring on two college students. College students, yes. That would be my preference. Um, just for 14 weeks in the summer, uh, but mainly the grass, weed whipping, fire hydrant maintenance, stuff of that nature. Um, and to, because of the, this whole saw grant thing, uh, we just, uh, we're in the process of purchasing, as part of the saw grant, a uh, system for the DPW department that will uh, track and uh, <clears throat> be used for the GIS system in all of our locating and there's all kind of programs that have to be followed and put in there. Yeah. And and I was looking that we need to free him up 
to to run this program and and be totally involved in that part of the DPW. Uh, right now we have four four timers. We send no one out by himself. Uh, they're always doubled up um, just for a safety issue. And uh, so we definitely need a fifth full timer and the part timers would just be on for the summer and then they would be let go. <coughs> and Mr. Ben Trabiera. I'm oh, sorry. Yeah, well, the question actually was going to be uh, has the laser means that I gave it to them at their meeting and I don't know if they, you know, how much, you know, we spoke on it briefly. Yeah. Did we ask for numbers on overtime to see the cost savings? Yes. Um, because we requested the size of the village having five full time employees. Um, I've talked to other communities and their numbers aren't that high. But if it's a cost saving as far as overtime, uh, we always have to look at the financial bottom line and have received any information yet. You know, I had Sandy run those numbers. Uh, I apologize, but there was something I think uh, she had calculated. It was uh, the DPW overtime was in the fourteen, fifteen thousand dollar, but that's probably relatively low because we had such a mild winter. You know, so that that could fluctuate. You know, depending on the kind of winter we have. <coughs> But you know, let me just say this, and you know, this is just you know for information only. Um, Staffing-wise, uh, four uh, four four timers is probably the lowest it's been in by far in probably 10, 15 years. Yes. I think at the height it was seven, nine, seven, yeah, eight, seven, eight four timers but plus the plus the superintendent. Yes. yes. <coughs> plus on. So um, I had detail, but uh, I assume that you would be the one responsible for hiring the. Yes. <clears throat> and one of the other issues that we you know, constantly run into in the summer months, and I uh, talked to Marcus about this because of vacation time. I have to actually deny vacation time. Because if I get two guys put in vacation for the same week, you know, so it's first come, first serve. That's standard in an That's standard. Yeah. You know, so it's first come, first serve, you know, so I can yeah, get one guy off and, and That's deny. standard in yeah. a DPW department and yeah. in, in municipality. They set up vacation schedules, one guy at a time goes. Yeah. Well, there so. was times when we couldn't have anybody go. Mm -hmm. Also. It happens sometimes, too. Well, yeah. So when, when were you looking at us and were you looking at bringing these people on? <laughs> uh, no, not, not many, I wish, but you know, it's a process and mid, mid, late May. <clears throat> We had talked about uh, uh, taking on some of these you know, catch basins and some of the regrouting that's necessary, you know, to repair some of these catch basins as compared to bringing in outside contractors. Uh, and they have done a few uh, and they, they showed them to me, so I was checking the quality of the work, to be put it like that, you know, make sure it's not some shiny job that's just going to bite us in the butt for a year from now. And uh, there's a couple guys on the uh, uh, DPW who have uh, demonstrated their ability to do this work, but <clears throat> there's a couple on that list that are going to be a total um, catch basin replacement where we don't have the equipment to actually take it out of the ground and you know reset a whole new catch basin. But some of the minor ones. Uh, similar to the work that I think is being done in Amherst right now. I think there's some catch basin being repaired right now in Amherst. You know, but it, it's mainly above ground work where... But those are the responsibility of the HLA? Yeah, yeah, but I'm saying but it's similar work. Oh. You know, that's what I'm saying. 
And their pay rates would be uh, consistent with the CBA? Yes. CBA, uh, clarify for me, please. Collective bargaining agreement. Okay. Who's pay rate? Part time and full time? The full just the full, just the full time. The full time will be. Yeah, 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 full time. Do you have a part time or 10 bucks? 10 bucks. How much? $10. Ten dollars. Yeah. I'm sure we all have some questions. The, um, I think the bottom line, I just would add, um, help me out here, I think it was 17,000 or was it 14,000 to the bottom line? It was. Maybe then it's just paying the part timer going to full time is only an additional eight hours pay a week. And then there's a pension contribution mm -hmm. and health care. Um, and we're taking the two part-timers, taking them out of a 12-month job, and just going to 14 weeks. And I think the overall increase in the bottom line was, you know, four, I think it was 14,000 if they went to 32 hours. It was 17,000 if they were 40. Yes. And it's like I uh, told Mark is that if we bring these uh, part-timers on on rainy days, we send them home. Uh, they don't sit around the shop when they can't get outside. I think I'd feel more comfortable giving some hardline numbers on the cost of adding another full timer, including employment taxes and social security taxes, and um, but definitely authorize the summer help today. The grass is growing, and we've had a lot of rain, and um, so would that be possible? Yes, yes, that's okay. So we'd be approving um, the hiring of two part timers yes. and, in essence, tabling the promotion from one to two. Just the two we get. Uh, yeah, we'll bring them back. I think that sheet that I passed out at the meeting had the uh, FICA and the, those, those different things on there the pension contribution, the FICA. It, it did, but I don't think it, it addressed any overtime issues. No, it didn't. That's why I'd like to get this yep. book paid over time. Yeah. We're hiring this okay. guy, this is what we're going to okay. say. We have to look at the financial yeah. bottom line. So. Just so we're clear, under the collective bargaining agreement, the Senate pension, this is a defined kind of yeah. issue. Yeah, defined kind okay. of issue. Isn't there a matching, though, a 3% or a 4%? 5%? Correct. So we have to factor that cost. Yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. I just don't want anybody in the crowd to get the wrong impression. Oh, no, no, no. It's a defined issue. Yeah, it's a defined issue. Okay. 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 Yeah. Yeah, we can put those numbers together. So I make a motion that we authorize DPW to hire two part-time workers for the summer help uh, capped at 14 weeks. At 32 hours at $10. At 32 hours at $10. Second. <laughs> Second. 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 We're going to probably move and support it that we bring on two part-time summer employees for a maximum 14 weeks at a maximum of 32 hours at 10 bucks an hour. Any questions on the motion? Roll, please. Trustee Freiburg? Yes. Trustee Baker Cole? Yes. Trustee Piccoli? Yes. Trustee Meisen? Yes. Trustee Chandler? Yes. Trustee Hazia? Yes. President Dilbert? Yes. Thank you. Park name. It was um, brought to my attention that the, uh, the Haven Place was looking to um, adopt a little park across the street from them. And, uh, and I was asked, you know, what's the name of that park? I don't know. We called it Bank Park. We called it Division Street Park. I think the Park and Rec Plan, Master Plan, referred to it as Division Street Park. It's never been given an official name. Um, and uh, the fact that Haven Place is looking to um, spend a little time over there and spruce it up and kind of adopt it, um, I would like to suggest that we consider officially naming the park Haven Place Park. Um, they've been an asset to our community. 
Um, there they are back in the corner. <laughs> I see Tina before I see Jack. <laughs> um, you know, and and their willingness and their volunteerism. <coughs> <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> um, you know, it shows me something about um, these people that they're not just here for any um, recognition. They're here doing what they do because this is the kind of people they are. And I couldn't think of a better <coughs> person and or group that. Um, that I think that park should be named after. And, you know, that, I mean, even if Haven Place, uh, for some unforeseen reasons, just to exist, it still needs, that park needs to have a name. And I think Haven Place Park is a good name for that, you know? I mean, it could have some meaning, you know, just a, a peaceful place to chill. You know? So I would, um, with that being said, I'm gonna suggest that we adopt a resolution, that we write and adopt a resolution formally naming the park at the corner of Main and Division Haven Place Park. So moved. Did I get a support? Oh, that was your motion? Yeah, yeah. Oh. yeah, that was my suggestion. That was my suggestion. <laughs> 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 been probably moved and supported that we adopt a resolution. Quick question. Naming, let me call it motion. Okay. Um, naming the park at the corner of Main and Division Haven Place Park. Any questions on the motion? Question. It's, is that name okay with them? Of they, course. Well, <laughs> Oh, okay. <laughs> That's it. Yeah, I, I mean, have you ever looked at the land and said, gee, I wish that was, you know, <laughs> the blue part or whatever. So it's okay with you. <laughs> I had kind of tipped uh, Tina and John off that, uh, so that, you know, they wouldn't be <laughs> blindsided. <laughs> blindsided. <laughs> but also to clarify, they are looking to, um, to spruce it up a bit. They're going to, I'm, I'm sure they're going to spend some time over there. That's, I think that's going to be one of the summer projects with their uh, youths and. Uh, they're looking for help and donations as well. And we're. I've also <laughs> suggested that they maybe uh, come to one of the park and rec uh, committee meetings and see if they can put their heads together and maybe come up with a long-term plan for the park. Yeah. <clears throat> Any other questions on the motion? Roll, please. Trustee Pickle? Yes. Trustee Pickle? Yes. Trustee Madison? Yes. Trustee Chandler? Yes. Trustee Hazian? Yes. Trustee Pridemore? Yes. President Booker? Yes. Can we clap? <laughs> Attorney Adams. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, I'm going to take this from the president. I, I apologize to the president when we, when we arrived. And I, this afternoon, like some of you have experienced over the past couple of days here, had some computer issues with the resolutions they have printed for you and have available for you. I apologize for that. I'm asking, I'm asking that you give me some consideration in that. But we had two, um, I, I got drafted down the Lennox New Haven Historical, and I apologize, George, for not having it. Um, and um, for the repeal of um, ordinance number 304 regarding the uh, water ordinance. So I should have that, I have that to you so that we can, I'll work with the clerk to make sure that we get that in the uh, package for the next, for the next meeting. Um, and one additional thing is that we, we're looking at supplying uh, the council with kind of an update, nothing too formal, but uh, just generally about, I mean, I know some of the, the medical marijuana issues and stuff comes up, that type of thing, provided to you. We have a means to do that. I've always been somewhat reluctant to do that from the perspective of, um, I don't want anybody to hit that reply all button with 10 minutes on it, okay? Um, so we're gonna try it. 
and sends himself out and oh, I'm talking. I'll talk to you about that but okay. we're going to try some stuff so just just take that in consideration if you get that from us okay if, if, but if you have questions on it and you hit individually to us directly um, to Al and I then we'll be able to, to do that and it should have a link for both of us on it the, the, the goal is to get you to a link to push in the link to get it back so you're doing it individually so just as those things come out, please take that into consideration. Okay. Payment of bills. <coughs> I make a motion to pay the professionals the amount of nine hundred, or I'm sorry, ninety-nine thousand five hundred thirty-six dollars and seventy-two cents uh, for May and April, in the amount of one hundred twenty-eight thousand six hundred eighty-one dollars and eighty-seven cents. Totaling two hundred twenty-eight thousand two hundred eighty dollars and fifty-nine cents. <laughs> Second. And probably moved and supported that we pay the bills in the amount of two hundred twenty-eight thousand. $218.59 total. Any questions on the motion? I have one uh, for the treasurer. Yep. Would that include uh, what we submitted for the saw grant? It does because we haven't gotten a reimbursement yet. Okay, so when, how do we recognize the reimbursement at a later date? I mean, when we get the money in, I'll put it out in my treasurer's report. We received okay, X yeah. amount of dollars okay. from the SAW grant. Okay, all right, thanks. And I was wondering, you know, we're showing that it's going out, but. We so, need to show that it's coming in. Yeah, so there's yeah. a mechanism that we will show that it's coming in. Okay, all right. Oh, um, right. one quick question. The New Haven signed utility fee in the amount of five thousand four hundred thirty-three dollars. Yep. That was not included in the original. It was. <coughs> it was included. Then now we're just sending the money. Yes. Out. Okay. Thanks. Any other questions? Roll, please. Trustee Yes. Trustee Foley. Yes. Trustee Mason. Yes. Trustee Chandler. Yes. Trustee Hesiak. Yes. Trustee Pridemore. Yes. President Dilber. Yes. Madam Clerk. Agenda items for June 13th, please, by June 6th, 2017. Um, also, we have scheduled public hearing, general operating, and fire village today to be set for the next meeting. June 13th. June 13th, yes. June 13th has to be. What time do you want to set that prior to the June meeting? 6.30. 6.30, that's typically, it typically doesn't take that much time. So a public hearing will be held at 6.30 p.m. June 13th for the purpose of uh, setting the general operating and fire village. This at the public hearing yes. here, yes. Yes. Second. Oh, we're missing somebody. I make a motion that we approve the 6.30 p.m. time on June 13th for a public hearing for the general operating and fire millage. Second. 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 Uh, prior to the June 13th meeting at 6.30 p.m. Any questions on the motion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carried. Treasury report. Total village assets for June 13th, 2017. April were 2,533 dollars for $2,533,004.92. I can say it. Thank you. 
I make a motion to receive and file the treasurer's report. Those to assets of two million five hundred and thirty-three thousand four dollars and ninety-three cents. Second. To move that supported that we file and receive the treasurer's report in the amount stated. Any questions on the motion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carried. Mr. Mr. Ryan Smith's contract. <clears throat> uh, Mr. Ryan Smith's contract, I would advise council, is a month by month contract. It would have to be renewed. I also had a, uh, a question. Uh, there was an email sent out by Mr. Ryan Smith saying that in order to receive information from the accountant, inquiries would have to be funneled through your office, and I don't think that was the end. It wasn't. I, I had a conversation um, with him, and I also had a conversation uh, with Ms. Uh, Lindsay. I, I definitely apologize to her. The tone of the email that was sent out uh, was, um, like I said, just short of being in all caps. I mean, it was. But, but moving forward, is transparency all around? Yes. She can walk in any time and ask questions. She, any elected official, she can talk to anybody who gets a paycheck from us. Okay. You know? Can I just put it, I have requested to be added to the audit's emails so I can be kept up to date, and so far that hasn't happened. Okay. Can I, I don't know what that is, council motion? I know he, John, has emailed with them, and I have not been okay. included. Okay. Since you made that request? Since I've made that request. Okay, okay I'll address that. The yeah, ways it means it's going to be bothering Sandra a lot. <laughs> so, that's good to know. Uh, and again, um, everybody knows where I stand on Mr. Ryan Smith's contract, so uh, someone else is going to have to justify spending another $10,000 to keep Mr. Ryan Smith on the book, so. Is he building? He's behind in billing. Yeah, he's behind it. I'm, I'm just wondering, is he maxing it out every month, I guess? Mm -hmm. okay. Oh, yeah. Because okay. I haven't seen a bill for a couple of months, so. The last bill he submitted was for January and February. Yeah, and it was for 20. Okay, so it was. Okay. <clears throat> My, oh, I'm sorry. Comment. My concern is, as, as was explained to me, is Sandy still in the motion? No. Uh, as was explained to me, um, <clears throat> one of the hang-ups on why it's taken so long, which I last month kind of explained in his defense, and actually kind of sounded funny as it was coming out of my mouth, I didn't actually want to sound as supportive as I, as I was, but with that understanding in mind, is that we're trying to track down documents, and it's ex extremely hard to track down these documents, if not impossible. And so it's been delaying it, understandably so. But at this point in time, as it's gone six, eight months beyond what we expected initially, I don't know if that's just a rough estimate, but it's, it's been a long time past what we initially thought and at, at a very high price tag. Can't we <coughs> assign somebody else in the office, like, like Sandy or, or, or any other office, that however, however we delegate it, can't somebody else that's making a lot less money than him be tasked with simply trying to track down these documents. And then once we find them, if we find them, then we forward them to Mr. Ryan Smith and maybe keep him, retain him his services at an hourly rate once we find these documents. But to my understanding, as, as it sounded, explained to, explained to me, could be wrong, I wish they were here to clarify, but um, we're basically paying him merely to, lar largely, I mean, he, he has other duties as well, but largely, Part of the reason why it's taken so long, why it's billing us ten thousand dollars a month, is that he is being paid to try and track down these these documents, these records, and he makes a lot of money just to merely try and track down documents. I'm wondering if somebody else could be tasked with that, and then once we find the documents, we forward it to him, and he charges us an hourly rate to file them accordingly. I think there's some. I think, the, and I could be wrong. And feel free to join in. Um, I think in, in his statement today was part of the process is analyzing all this information that is being requested and 
making sure that the auditors are receiving, like I said, if you take a whole year of uh, water and sewer bills, that's not a one hour job. That's a, that's a major undertaking to fully understand, um, you know, what we've taken in and the fact that we still have this issue with um, Brookside. Um, you know, while that is, um, help me out, Rachel, please. That's account receivable where we actually mm -hmm. bill it, but we yeah. haven't received it. And that really throws our whole accounting process for a loop. Um, you know, while we, we, you know, we call it uh, $10,000 a month, which is $120,000 a year. Uh, when it's all said and done, he is the lowest paid of all three major professionals that we employ. Okay. And that doesn't justify his pay, but it does the scope of work that he is undertaking and the condition that we were in. And I don't think there's anybody in this office, including Sandy at this time, I mean, because if we pull Sandy off her general duties, then who's going to do her general duties? <coughs> You know? But I guess my, and I wish they had stuck around. But, um, I mean, the question becomes how, um, what's the word I want to look for? How much, uh, how much time does it really take to try and track these down? I mean, is it merely sending an email to a vendor saying, hey, you built us for this much three years ago, we don't have a record for it, can you send it to them? And can Sandy do that? And I, again, I wish either of them had stuck around. You can only see when it's bringing an intern to send emails or something. Like I'm sorry, what was that? Uh, I was saying we could almost even just bring in an intern if it's just a matter of sending emails and logging into websites and trying to find physical documents. But I don't know if that is what it is like, right? <laughs> well, I'm sure everyone knows my position on uh, uh, Mr. Ryan Smith and, like I said, from 2012 13 audit, 13 14 is complete. 15, 16 in process, and to interrupt that card right now would be a major, major mistake. 14, but, 15 in process. Or 14, 15, whatever it was. But I mean, you know. He just said today that 13 has deficiencies, 14 has deficiencies. 13 has deficiency because the auditor did not have a starting point that they were confident in because of previous audits. Uh, you know, if you think that you got $10 and they only see eight of it, they don't have the confidence in that starting point. And so that's why the 13 um, audit, it's my understanding, um, there's some deficiency in there. But there's a couple months that they just couldn't, they just couldn't balance the, uh, <coughs> and I think there was a couple months that were off by, help me out here, a few thousand dollars. With what? Uh, like in, yeah. Yeah. And yeah, it was a couple months that they they just and it got to the point where they were spending so much time trying to find that couple thousand dollars, but it was a couple thousand dollars to the good for the village. Um, that he said it's not worth spending that much time trying to find it. So let's move on and hopefully it'll bounce itself off in the time. So there's there's a lot. There's a lot going on. A couple thousand dollars in the, scheme, in the grand scheme of the budget is really insignificant. And that's why they moved on without actually getting those those months balanced because they were spending too much time trying to find, I don't know, it was three, four thousand dollars. But it was three and four thousand that was good to the village, not the shortest to the village. So we had that much more in the bank that month than a shortfall. So it was to our benefit. And why waste the time trying to find it? Because and they were just going through boxes and looking for records and trying to balance out everything. But and these are the kind of things that they're they're just running into constantly. You know. The bank records all caught up? It's my understanding they're up through March. The bank records, sorry. I still haven't received copies, but I've been told they are. <clears throat> you, uh, just to clarify, you said you have not? I have not received the copies I've requested, and what is a VSNA is where I was told they were housed. There's still thousands of dollars unreconciled, so I can't pull the correct reports on VSNA. I have requested them. 
My last email request was on 412. And after four email requests unanswered. If the bank records are reconciled, would BSNA be changed to reflect? If, they sh they're sh if they're stored in BSNA, it should show a report. I should be able to pull that month's report and have a zero recon unreconciled balance. And it's not. So I don't know if, I can't get a response, I don't know if he did a group of months together that if I were to run from April to July, those added up would equal out. But when I run April, it's unreconciled. When I run May, it's unreconciled. When I run June, it's unreconciled. And these are some of the numbers that, that I, I understand. They're, they're talking about their numbers to the good as far as the village is concerned, and they weren't gonna waste time trying to balance them. But I guess my question to you, uh, did you not meet with Sandy last week and- I did, and I asked her about it, okay. and she said that she wasn't sure where they were, that John had done them. And she said she was running a BSNA and they weren't reconciled for her either and wasn't sure what the problem was. Okay. But what's from when she took over- I got a problem because that's not what she told me. When she took over, they're all reconciled. And that's what I talked, she was having a problem with December, but it was a timing issue. Okay. But when I asked her, what about the prior ones? She said that she was looking because I sent an email and said, here's copies of what I have. They're not reconciled. And she said, I don't know what happened because I ran the same thing and they weren't reconciled. And I said, so. What time period are you referring to? So we're anything after March 31st, 2014. After, okay. Mm -hmm. And I said the same thing to her. I don't know if they were done in a group, okay. that if we run six months together, that it, may, that it may be reconciled. But I'm not getting an answer to that question to know that. And I'm not gonna spend five hours running two months, three months, four months. Is it supposed to be you know, going back to March through June? I, okay. <clears throat> uh, question is, uh, uh, if we were to vote no today, are there any immediate deadlines coming up that if the stuff that uh, Ryan Smith was referencing that he's going to be filing shortly, uh, if they don't get filed, are we going to have be penalized for anything? If, if it delays one month, let's just say one month. Well, the, if you shut them down right now, then the auditors won't get their information. <coughs> and are those... Is there a deadline to, for that to get done coming up within the next month? No, it's that you just, you just bring the auditors to a standstill. Yeah, right, right. the deadline for the audit has passed, so we're already behind on that. On the current year's audit? We haven't even started the current year's audit. We're still in 15. <clears throat> he claimed, he, you know, uh, if somebody can clarify, because he did say it, I just didn't catch it, the whole thing. He said that he's planning on filing what, 14 and 15 coming up very soon, or 15 and 16, what did he? We are working on 14, 15 right now. And he was supposed to have had the information to the auditors by the first. They, as of today, still haven't received it. He was here and said that he's still working on it and hopes to have it to them next week. So we missed a deadline? Oh, we missed a deadline. No, there's no deadline. Mm -hmm. There's no deadline. Oh, she said me first. <coughs> But I mean, I think he explained it, you know, he had what, seven or eight of the items ready to go, but he was still working yeah. on three or four of them or something like that. There are a lot. Of and he likes to send them all at one time. Yeah. And again, so if, if we do, okay, so well, we've already missed the deadline, but um, penalty-wise. No, yeah. no, there's, there's no deadline or penalty as far as the auditors are concerned. No, there's deadlines with the state when the state. file reports aren't. Right, there's yeah. file yeah. reports with the state. And are we looking at work like we're coming up to a? No, the deadline, the nearest deadline is the Act 51, and I think it's December. Wait, F65, that might be coming. There's F65, so we. No. I think he's. We can't do the F65s until the budgets are done because it's based on numbers from that, not budgets, um, audits. So he's actually amending prior years that were done without the the, 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 the
What is your pleasure? I, I would you know, strongly suggest that we continue employing Mr. Ryan Smith. I would hate to see what would happen if we brought the audits to a standstill and our state reporting to a standstill. He said he's going to have the documentation, he plans to have the documentation within the next few weeks. He said the next week he would have the rest of it ready to go to the officers. I make a motion to extend John Smith, or John Ryan Smith's contract through the month of June at, or are we on May? Are we doing it for this month or for next month? You know, I don't this know. month, I think. I think we're on Is it this month? I think it's to continue until the next meeting. Okay. Next meeting. Till the next meeting at a cap of 10,000. Okay. Second. And probably move in support that we extend the contract to John Ryan Smith uh, <clears throat> until the next meeting at a cap of $10,000. Any questions on the motion? You know, I must say this, and you know, please forgive me, because I don't want to sound like a broken record. The work he is doing is invaluable. And I know sometimes John comes off kind of rough and scruff and whatnot, um, but the work he is doing is really invaluable to this village. And, you know, I mean, no one wants him to get totally caught up and become a once a month consultant or something more than I do. But, um, you know, to bring him to a standstill right now, like I said, just wouldn't be smart. And with that being said, any other questions on the motion? Roll, please. Trustee Chandler? Yes. Trustee Magnuson? Yes. Trustee Percoli? No. Trustee Vanderpool? No. Trustee Haziak? Yes. Trustee Pridemore? No. President Gilbert? Yes. Something that I'm gonna give to, I think, it's Mr. Aziak and Mr. Lieutenant Kirk. We're talking about ordinances. Um, and I think there's another one out there, but uh, we're looking at our cemetery rates. While our cemetery um, is owned by the village, operated by the village, um, in most cases we pay for. I mean, it pays for itself in whatever we do. Uh, whether it's uh, selling the plot or opening and closing the grave. But our margin is really, really tight. Okay, and we need to look at our rates. And we put up, and some of have already make them available. Uh, we put up some rates from other neighboring communities. And uh, one of the things that we really want to look at is what it costs for a non-resident to get buried here in New Haven. And this is what we're seeing is a lot of non-residents are coming to New Haven because our rates for non-residents are cheap, are, are cheaper than a lot of communities. And and not to not give these people a place to go, but, but we need to be careful that we're filling them off quick. So you know, we want to take a look at the rates and, you know, do whatever we need to do as far as analyzing what's out there and and make a recommendation um, the other thing is uh, the water shutoff fees the current ordinance charges thirty dollars to turn the water back on but it doesn't charge for turning it off and I know the old ordinance going back a lot of years had a turn on and turn off fee. And the only reason I'm bringing this up because um, there's a group of residents and this 20, 25 residents historically don't pay the water bill, they fall behind and we shut them off and 15 minutes later they come pay their bill. 
But you know, in the meantime, we've got all this extra paperwork that is being done up here. We've got to send the DPW back out to turn it back on. Personally, I want to make it painful. Okay, I mean, excuse me, but I mean, it would even suggest that we keep track of it. And first time is 30, and the second time is 50, and the third time it's 100. Okay, they have this mentality that, you know, I'm not going to pay it until I have to. I mean, I, I bottom line have to. And like I said, we turn it off on a Monday morning, and you know, the office opened at 9, we turn it off at 9.15, and they're here to pay it at 9.30. So in we're cash. We're not charging them both ends? The office no, because the ordinance doesn't, doesn't, doesn't provide for a turn off. Mm -hmm. So we need to add a turn off. And we may need to give some consideration to some other penalty that we can put in there. And there's a core group of people of 20, 25 residents every month. You know, there may be 30, but it's a basic core of 20, 25 every month. Okay. And I understand there's that, that person that may have a bad month. I understand that. When your name comes up on that list every month, I have an issue with that. So they're currently paying they're currently paying the twenty, uh, the thirty dollars extra. But they pay the thirty. Okay. What time does uh, the DPW's eight hour shift end? Three thirty. So in addition to maybe the fee on both ends, the put in the ordinance that uh, if you pay after three thirty, three thirty, it'll be turned on the next business day. There's a part of me that says that if you pay after three thirty, you got to wait till the following morning because they've gone home. You pay overtime if we. Time. You know, because one of the things that we try to do is stagger start time with the DBW, but now we're inconveniencing them because we got to bring in two people late to stay over, or, you know, I would, it wouldn't hurt my feeling if we decided that, you know, if you pay after 3.30, then it'll get turned on the following morning. You know, let's, let's see what the house smells like. You know, it's just, it's the same people, and, and it, it causes Melissa, who, who runs that part of it, it just, the paperwork is just unbelievable. You, you're trying to keep track, make sure that you don't turn off the wrong person, you know, and it's just a, a unbelievable amount of paperwork. So that's another thing that, that we're going to have a discussion about. Uh, Parks and Recreation grant writer request. I'm not sure who that came from. What did you, what did you, I had an answer to her last month. She, she had sent me something to that effect. Yeah, it's a, it's a letter. She has a letter. It's a letter. Oh, yeah. Okay. Okay. And I told her to bring some names or bring some people forward. Did, did she go? She was asking for permission to go out and. Yeah, the letter sheet. She's requesting approval to hire a part time grant writer uh, on behalf of the Parks and Recs Committee. They have several grants available that would assist them in funding going forward in multiple park and recreation, recreation projects that are listed on the Village Master Plan. That's all it says. Yeah, I. I thought I answered her and said, well, we're going to bring some names and dollar amounts forward you know, so we can act them. And or could we consider, if we're going to hire a part-time grant writer, you know, for the entire village, so yeah, we're see who else is out there. Okay, so I'm assuming she's just looking for a motion to authorize this? Well, she's looking for a motion to hire somebody. Oh, does she have somebody? No. No. Okay, what oh. are just a great position. Well, why don't we table this report? Get more information. Yeah, yeah. She, she needs to bring the information to us. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, we're going to need candidates, ballpark figures, right. how she's acquiring the people, and what type of grants are there because yeah. I was on Grant Finder and I also attended the DNR class on grants for communities. There's very few grants out there, but we don't qualify for that many. So for us to spend X amount of dollars um, pursuing some of this, we're all not even there, we'd have to find information to justify spending the money. I will say this on that note. Uh, I agree with you for the large part, especially from the government. There are some private um, private sources of, of grants, too. I, I, I just through my outside employment, I uh, 
came across a guy and talked to a guy and he, he mentioned, oh yeah, there's this, this one endowment fund that, uh, yeah, they got four billion dollars and they, they hand money out quite a bit. I jotted it down and I'll, I'll pass it off to anybody that's interested, but there are some private. Well, the grant finder uh, license that I turned over to Trustee Pacoli has those endowments on it. Okay. Uh, like I said before, out of 10 pages of Michigan grants that were available, we qualified for two and they were for uh, improvements on your police department. That's not going to do us any good. So those are down the that there's 10 pages of grants and we qualify for virtually nothing. So I think it's a great idea. And if she could say, this is what we can get, you know, but we need the information, I think. So we will contact her and she needs to bring some name and dollar amounts to us. I think I'll be uh, uh, can I address the cemetery thing I had after Ways and Means then? I was going to take it on the rear cemetery. <coughs> Oh, I'm sorry. Yes, sir. Yeah, that's fine. I can do that for you. No, that's fine. I'm still talking about cemetery. Thinking about cemetery. Really? Don't fall off. Did you? Okay. <laughs> I am sorry for, yeah. That's fine. I'll do it after this. Mr. Van der uh, we're going with E first, say? Yeah, E first. Okay. okay. Fellow measures. Okay, so what I've what I have in, well what I've provided you guys I think it was Saturday or something like that. Um, it should be a one page one pager similar to this. I'm going to read off of it, so it, it should be the same word that you got in the email. I plan on making five separate motions. These motions are not a a, vote, a yes vote on this. These motions does not equate to you supporting the village of New Haven actually uh, necessarily passing an ordinance to, to permit such facility to uh, operate, be established and operate within the village. A yes vote on that, these uh, motions will only put the language, as I specifically read for each one individually, to be put on a ballot measure, uh, on, the ba on the November ballot, which equates to letting the people decide at that time during the November ballot to decide if they want us to pursue to further pursue afterwards establishing the ordinance to uh, permit such facilities and again I'm going to issue I'm going to read five separate motions so you can vote yes to four of them no to one of them or however you so please but again these these motions absolutely 100% do not equate to you supporting any of these medical marijuana facilities nor does it uh, equate to you supporting even medical marijuana at all whatsoever. This is just, the, each, each of these motions is for us to put the language, as I'm specifically going to read thereafter for each one individually, to put that language onto November's ballot. Thereafter, if the ballot, does, if each measure does pass, we would then be bound to only thereafter, after it passes by a majority vote of the residents, establish a, a, a uh, uh, I'm sorry, establish an ordinance which permits with regulation, I hyphenated it so that it's, that it's acknowledged as a, you know, like a proper noun. Permit with regulation, it's not a noun, but you, you get the idea. Um, you can't separate the two, it's permit with regulation. So it's not just, we're not just opening uh, Pandora's box and, and saying, oh, we're gonna open it up and they can wild wild west from that point on. Permit with regulation. We reserve the right to thereafter pass an ordinance with as strict a measures as we so feel necessary to protect the welfare and common uh, interests of the people um, after such point. But again, that's only for each of these that passes and gains more than 50% of the public's uh, support during the November election. Should I entertain uh, questions on it before, before I read the motions? Yes, I would. Okay. So with that being said, questions if you want? Yeah. Have, have you had a chance to look at this? We, I have, and we, we've, some of the questions came up at the last meeting um, because we at one point we were at a referendum or an initiative stage in discussion about the public actually creating the ordinance itself. Um, after we've talked, we've talked Al and Al Addis and I and <laughs> David Kirkhoff have, have spoken on this, and we're looking at this from a, from a question submitted to the electors. And from that perspective, he's asked me to look at it. These fit within the requirements of the state statute for purpose for that purposes. Mm -hmm. 
And they do. They do? Correct. Okay. Questions? Well, let, let me clarify that. That's not necessary. In my opinion, they do, and it meets the standard. And uh, Trustee Van Kirkhoff and I have looked at it as many. It's, it's relatively broad under the form of questions to be submitted to the electors. Um, in my review of this and Al's review of this, it, it meets that requirement. That ultimately could be rejected, and we will certainly, if it's the pleasure of the board, to have it placed on the ballot, we'll, we'll work with the community, you know, we'll work with whoever we need to to make sure that it gets on the ballot in the appropriate manner. But I ultimately, I, I don't want anybody to be confused that I can ultimately guarantee that it, it, it is or it isn't in an acceptable form. Okay. And again, I, I just want to stress again, even if we put it on November's ballot, all five of them, let's say three of them pass, okay, so then we're, we're bound at that point to create an ordinance or ordinances which uh, permit with regulation those three or uh, facilities that, that, that passed the November ballot. Um, so it's whatever the people decide. And then at, again, after that point, we reserve the right to permit with regulation. It doesn't say how much regulations we can put. We can, if we want them open only from 2 p.m. to 4 p.m. on Tuesdays, you know, we can do it, we can do it, you know, the sky's the limit. We, we can regulate however we feel necessary to best benefit the common good of the people. So um, with that being said, I make a motion that the village of New Haven place the following yes or no ballot measure on November 7th election ballot. Shall the village of New Haven permit with regulation the establishment of and operation of a limited quantity of medical marijuana growers within the village limits pursuant to Michigan Public Act 281 of 2016? Second. Do I hear support? Yes. Second. Can probably move and support it. I'm, go, sorry. I'm just going to refer to this as item one. I'm not going to read it. Okay. <laughs> the item one, um, the probably move and support that item one. What am I trying to say? <laughs> 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 the motion has to move and support it. The item one be placed on the ballot. Any questions on the motion? Yeah, so I guess I have a couple of questions. Um, first and foremost, hey, I want to thank whoever came out today to, to support uh, or bring their support to the, the council. Um, you know, one thing that we do encourage, obviously, is participation. So we certainly want to see that. Um, so I think, thank you guys for that. Um, that's appreciative. Um, my question, and, and I'm certainly for the people voting, and, and really, my issue really isn't about medical marijuana, and it's really not about marijuana being legal. I mean, that was already decided. Um, my issue is, is, why are we in such a hurry? A small town of 4,000 people, why are we in such a hurry to be out in the forefront when a lot of this has not even been decided? So you just made mention the fact that we can do regulations and we can set forth all of this, but based on Public Act 281, it really says the state has that control. We can't necessarily, we can probably do some things here, um, but it says that the state has ultimate control over that. Um, the other issue is, is I've tried to do my own research with our state reps, one being somebody who's on LARA, which is the licensing board, um, with our com county commissioners and with the county as a whole, and nobody's willing to take this on at this point in the sense that, A, they've put out the licenses or they've at least passed the medical marijuana license, the public back 281. But from there, it kind of stops. I mean, they're still in the process of building a, a computer system. They're still in the process of figuring out how to assess. They're still figuring out how to tax. Yes, there's excise taxes, the 3% excise tax. Um, and there's also the, the other options, or not other options, but the other um, um, assessments that will go towards the Treasury. So the Treasury, basically, under this public act, is getting quite a bit of money. Um, but we're going to then put the burden on our municipality to then try and navigate the rest at a local municipality level. 
And I don't see why we're trying to jump the gun and do that right away when there's other entities, there's other municipalities around us that have more money, that have the ability to navigate these things. I mean, we have $3 million in assets at this point. We've done two things. We've had two lawsuits in the past uh, two years, three years, uh, both of which we lost uh, to the tune of, of quite a bit of money. Um, so now you're asking us to put the burden on our back to then try and navigate. You know, what are the taxes? What are the assessments? How do we police this? We haven't even brought our police in, as far as I know, to kind of talk to them about this. Um, we don't know what is actually standard practice or protocol, so we don't know how to monitor that. Um, again, I'm for the will of the people, but I think we really need to, to walk a thin line on this in the sense of we need to have a better understanding of what's in front of us before we embark down this road to try and navigate it on our own. And really the burden's gonna fall on our, our attorneys because we're not the ones who are gonna navigate that. And so that's probably gonna be pretty costly in the long run um, if we're trying to navigate and pursue this. I mean, it's great because Public Act spells out a lot of provisions it's got the applications, it's got the licensing board, but I just talked to a state rep on the licensing board and they are nowhere near completing a lot of the actual segments that are in these, this law. So, and, and again, we just passed this in January, correct? Am I wrong in that? It was just passed in January? December, I think. December. I don't know of any government that works within six months in order to create all of this all of this background, all of this substructure, all of this computerized networking, in order to put transactions in, in order to put billing in, all of that stuff. Uh, I, I don't believe that's all been done. So my thought process is we hold off for a vote. I'm not saying we don't put a vote on the ballot at some point, but I really think we should do a little bit more of our due diligence in our research before we embark down this road because honestly this will take a lot of our time and effort and and it could take up a lot of our our money so that's all i'm going to say no you can if you have a question but we're not going to get into it back before we're back. well I, I think he had he, he there were some statements made which i, I think were either i not a not true or uh b worded in a way that was uh, not forthcoming. Um, you can reply to the chair. Yeah, sure, definitely. The, uh, I apologize for the moment. Um, well, the, these concerns were not expressed to me. I did send this out, I, I understand it was kind of over the weekend, but we've had ample time. We knew that this was an issue for over a year. We've tabled this twice, for, I'm sorry, not tabled it. We've issued six month moratorium twice for over a year now. And it was even talked about before that. It's been like a year and a half now that this has been brought, that we should have known that it, it was gonna be a, a, an issue, uh, as it was mentioned in December, I thought it was November, uh, but it could be December, that the Michigan Public Act 281 of 2016 was passed. We've had, yeah, since September, September. Um, so it, it's been on the books for a good six months. If you had, if, if the concerns were there at that time, I would have appreciated that they would have been brought up uh, especially since at least you know Friday or Saturday when it got sent out to council, um, and it hasn't. I would have gladly looked up the the uh, portions of uh, Public Act 281 of 2016, which do address this, because yes, they do designate the uh, the duties and the or, I'm sorry, not not only just the duties, the uh, uh, privilege. Of, what's the word I'm looking for? Privileges, basically, of each municipality to further delegate it. They basically give each municipality you know, a, a blank, blank canvas, do what you want, basically. It says you can regulate it, you know, to the sky's the limit. I, there's a couple exclusions. There's a couple exclusions, and they're not, they're not, uh, they're nothing that would, you know, pop your eyes out of your head. Um, so yeah, it does give us the mechanisms. Have we, have we done our, all of our research? No, unfortunately, but I have tried. I've, I made a motion a few months ago to try, and uh, it didn't garner support. But I made a motion to delegate our, our legal counsel to draft an ordinance. We could have a workable ordinance. And there was a, a resident who here uh, in the audience who expressed her concern that uh, you know uh, she she wanted to um, 
uh, see what, you know, she said, I need to see what I, I'm going to be voting on anyway. I don't just want a, a broad statement. Well, I tried to designate, I made a motion to designate our legal counsel to draft something just so we could look at it, not that we're going to be passing it, to bring it back to council. And we, we've had various examples delivered to us, with all of the council, to my understanding. But I, I definitely received it, and I forwarded it to the attorney. And I said, well, we could, we could work off of that. It was, it was pretty lengthy, because uh, they duplicated a lot of the language five times for each facility, but it came out to like 30 pages. We could have worked on that, we could have tried to scale it down, we could have started our own. But either way, the motion was made, and it never gave Garner support. I tried, we tr we, I, I, I tried at least, to have our legal counsel have something ready for us to look at. Um, so, would I have preferred it to go this route? Absolutely not, but I've been trying for over a year to get, you guys, uh, to, to get counsel to consider this. Now, we've had some changed faces since then. That's another reason why I am pursuing it still at this point. Um, but but the, the effort's been made. Also, um, I, I, you mentioned about how much we can, we can charge you and this and that. And it is, I, I, will, I will concede the fact that it is more specified and clar uh, clarified at the state level. Uh, but the, there is a, a at least base figure of what we can charge is five thousand dollars per, per facility per year. Now, on top of that, you have to consider that we're going to get increased revenue for uh, the each each structure. If they're going to be occupied, you know, we, um, as opposed to blank empty barren land, we're not collecting much. If we, if they were to take up some vacant land, that would you know umpteen times increase the value of the said property. We get uh, revenue increased revenue in the village just because we have more developed land in use. Um, but quite honestly, from a personal perspective, just a personal perspective, it might be different for each one of us here. I, I don't mind beyond the $5,000. I'm not uh, passing this because I'm looking at dollar signs for the village. That, that's just me personally. Uh, the $5,000 is there, but that's not, that's not driving my incentive. Uh, I can elaborate, but I'll just say I, I'm, I'm a believer in the, in the healing powers of medicinal marijuana. I, I could put 100 exclamation marks after that statement. Um, but that's where I'm coming from. So the dollars and cents signs, I could care less if we charge anything beyond the $5,000. Um, but that's, that's to be decided. And again, we can, if we want to take a little bit of time or something like that, it's, it says reasonable amount of time. Um, uh, you know, that's something that we, we can make sure before we pass the ordinance that it, that it's, it meets, you know, at least four of our, uh, our likings. Okay. So. I, I hope we don't have, it's, which I'm, I certainly will permit to an extent, but I hope we don't have 15 minutes on each item because they're. Thank you. Can I ask a quick question? Thank you. Please. Uh, November 7th, are there any other um, issues on that ballot? No, so it, uh, not to my understanding. So, so is there a reason you picked a year that that would be the only ballot that would draw people to the polls? Uh, for, for as far as I know, I mean, hey, the school millage failed so that they might be. Don't take They're it not going to put it on with marijuana. Well, I don't know. I'm just saying. But no, uh, is there a reason? No, not particularly. The only reason, actually, if, if you read at the bottom of the one page, as, as I sent it out a few days ago, um, it does, I do, I would have liked to go for August, but um, the deadlines for those are, actually, one of them's already passed, and it's a little murky on, on what's what in terms of the deadlines, because it's got three different deadlines as to uh, when the wording is due. When the right, but you weren't anticipating a traditional low vote or turnout because it's only one item. No, no, I think, I, 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 I hope, and as uh, one of the persons mentioned in public comment, more than, uh, I don't know, I don't know if it was a scientific number, but uh, back by staff, when she said something like 90% of, of the community is where it's a valid issue, and the public gets a vote, they vote for it. Uh, so quite honestly, the more the merrier, in my mind. I, I But you do understand traditionally when there's one issue during an election, on an election ballot, very low voter turnout. Do you understand that? I invite anybody else who's got a, and actually that's going to be the next uh, uh, item after this. Okay. So, so anybody else call for this election will be borne by us. I suppose so. But if that's the only thing on the ballot, it will be. Right. Okay. Yes. And we have gotten some dollar figures. Two, three, and six thousand. Yeah. Okay. 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 <clears throat> Any other questions on paragraph one, on item one? If we were to allow these uh, items to be on the, uh, you know, vote for them to be on the ballot, and, and um, such a ballot measure were to pass. Um, is there a specific time frame on, on when the council would have to take action in response? Uh, no, not as not as not as phrased. So, and, and again, I would invite that you know we, we take our time. 
So to to um, trustee Chandler's point, we could kind of sweat it out a little bit to see what the other municipalities come up with should the ballot measure pass. Only until November. Well, no. I mean, if the, if the ballot passes. If it passes in November, if this goes on the ballot and passes, then we're not rushed to even that. Yeah, we're not going to have an ordinance in December agreement yeah, to right. take action. Yeah. But not I, I would agreement. imagine, once I would you imagine. open this up, then you are I, obligated. I would, yes, but I, I would say this, I, I wouldn't drag our feet, I wouldn't purposely drag our feet. In fact, if anything, um, I would maybe preemptively request that our attorney draft something, not for us to vote on, but in, in, ex, in anticipation of any of these motions passing in November, to have something somewhat available. My thought process is if we're waiting, why don't we just wait without paying three to six thousand dollars for a ballot proposal, without being obligated, without being stressed? Why don't we just sweat it out without having all of that looming over our head? I've made the motion before and didn't even hear our support. Cool. Well, that a hint, Virginia support. Well, there were different phases right. on council at the time as well. And there was, in, in my personal discussions with others <clears throat> who didn't offer their support, so there's six of you guys. Um, I, I think the lack of support was actually for different things that, and understandings that probably wouldn't uh, be applicable to this time around after clarification. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, I don't think a lot of them are applicable. Do we still have lawsuits pending in several communities that have cost those communities hundreds of thousands of dollars in litigation fees because this is such unstable ground? I don't know. It's, it's, it's an undiscovered country, and frankly, we can't afford it. I think, and again, I've made this mention before, we let other people experience the growing pains. This industry is not going to go away. I don't think that there's any deadline that says we must have it on a one-item agenda this November. That was, uh, that was one thing that uh, President Gilbert did, or I'm sorry, uh, Trustee Chandler did mention, um, is uh, what, why now? And I, I'm sorry I didn't address that. But uh, as was made mention in a town hall uh, by one of the lawyers and whatnot, actually maybe a couple of them touched on it, I'm not sure. Um, but again, the, the first and foremost ones that are out there right now that have their expensive lawyers here, whatnot, they're the ones who actually, again, they're paying big money to, for these lawyers to make sure that they got all their I's dotted, T's crossed. They're the ones coming to us ahead of time. They got their ducks in a row. If we, if we, the sooner we pass it, the more professional ones that actually know what they're doing are going to be hopefully, hopefully opening shop with us. Um, if we wait and a couple of years later it goes by and other, they get their establishments in Chesterfield, in, in Richmond, or where, wherever the case may be, then we miss out on those and we get the leftovers. And I don't want the leftovers. Do you think these attorneys did not present to these communities that are currently being sued? I'm not sure. And I, I Professional I cannabis have, rights attorneys are concerned. representing their clients and suing municipalities. They were just as professional, they dotted just as many I's, crossed just as many T's. You're, you state that, but that can't No, that is happening. But you're well, that can't be proven. You're saying, you're saying bold language, and I think that needs bold language. Okay, there's a motion on the table, then we need to call a vote on this one, please. And item one pertains to growers. growers. And I use the language as used in uh, the state statute, so growers seems weird to me, but it seems unprofessional, but that's what they refer to. Any other short, direct questions? Not. Sorry about that. <laughs> no, your direct report. Um, roll, please. Trustee Rankin Cole. Yes. Trustee Rankin Yes. Trustee Myerson. No. Trustee Chandler. No. Trustee Hazia. Yes. Trustee Pryor. No. President Dilbert. No. That's one. I make a motion uh, that the village of New Haven place the following yes or no ballot measures on those, those uh, November 7th election ballot. Shall the village of New Haven permit with regulation the establishment of and operation of a limited quantity of medical marijuana safety compliance facilities within the village limits pursuant to Michigan Public Act 281 of 2016? Second. Been properly moved and supported. that item two pertaining to medical marijuana safety compliance facilities be placed on the ballot. Any questions on the motion? Roll, please. 
Trustee Baker Cole? Yes. Trustee Piccoli? Yes. Trustee Mason? Yes. Trustee Chandler? No. Trustee Hesiak? Yes. Trustee Pregmer? No. President Dilbert? Yes. I make a motion that the Village of New Haven place the following yes or no ballot measure on November 7th election ballot. Shall the Village of New Haven permit with regulation the establishment of and operation of a limited quantity of medical marijuana processors within the village limits pursuant to Michigan Public Act 281 of 2016? Second. Adopting moved and supported that item number three pertaining to medical marijuana processors be placed on the ballot. Any questions on the motion? Can we have a, um, a refresher on exactly what the processor would be? To, um, the processors, uh, in a nutshell, is the, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but the processors is the one that actually uh, put, put the, the raw product into, into um, you know, waxes and oils and whatnot and stuff like that. Yeah. Yeah. To, to process it into the final product. <clears throat> Any other questions? Roll, please. Trustee Baker Cole? Yes. Trustee Hesia? Yes. Trustee Piccoli? Yes. Trustee Mason? No. Yes. Trustee Chandler? No. Trustee Primor? No. President Dilbert? Yes. I make a motion that the Village of New Haven place the following yes or no ballot measures on November 7th election ballot. Shall the Village of New Haven permit with regulation the establishment of and operation of a limited quantity of medical marijuana secure transporters within the village limits pursuant to Michigan Public Act 281 of 2016? Second. I'm probably moved and supported to item number four pertaining to medical marijuana secure transporters be placed on the ballot. Question on the motion? Roll, please. Trustee Baker Cole? Yes. Trustee Piccoli? Yes. Trustee Mason? Yes. Trustee Chandler? No. Trustee Hasiak? Yes. Trustee Pridemore? No. President Dilbert? Yes. I make a motion that the Village of New Haven place the following yes or no ballot measure on November 7th election ballot. Shall the Village of New Haven permit with regulation the establishment of and operation of a limited quantity of medical marijuana provisioning centers within the village limits pursuant to Michigan Public Act 281 of 2016? Second. And proudly moved and supported that item number five pertaining to medical marijuana provisioning centers be placed on the ballot. Questions on the motion? Roll, please. Trustee Baker Cole? Yes. Trustee Hazian? Yes. Trustee Piccoli? Yes. Trustee Mason? No. Trustee Chandler? No. Trustee Primor? No. President Dilbert? No. Next Please help me out here, Madam Kirk. Yes. <laughs> Which ones? Was it three, four, two, three, and four to pass? Yes. Two, three, four, and four. Correct. And one and five, six. Correct. The uh, next item on the agenda? Yes. Next item on the agenda. So, um, in, uh, in hopes that something like this doesn't happen again, and, and absolutely having nothing to do, or potentially something to do with, but uh, hopefully, not have to do with this again, we don't get to revisit it. But it helps that when, when council uh, is hesitant to act on a matter, whether it be one direction or the other, and whether it's and when it is the citizens absolute desire, they have the passion, they have the energy, and they want council to take action, and it's just not happening. I would like to empower the people just like they have the right to do recalls, and I'll address that, I'm sure they'll be addressing questions, um, to, to be able to go out, garner a whole bunch of signatures based on, and, and this can be determined, this can be drafted, however the legal counsel is directed to, or however they decide might be best, and presented to us at a later point for us to decide. Um, for the residents to be able to garner a certain amount of signatures, 
potentially, uh, as I think is the case in the recalls, based on a certain percentage of the last gubernatorial uh, election, um, gather a certain amount of signatures in order to place something that they want on the ballot on the ballot, um, rather than having to wait and for their elected officials who aren't taking action when they believe that there is a clear and present desire of the residents for something to get done on something. So, with that being said, I make a motion to instruct the village's legal counsel to draft an ordinance which will provide registered voters within the village a means by which to conduct citizen-led initiatives in order to add measures to future election ballots. Can you get an ordinance for that? Yeah, because it is not established in the village law. Correct. And I've discussed that with, yeah, I was just, that's what I was, for the last month I've been making a million phone calls and I went up to Lennox, our, our current clerk, uh, the um, Macomb County, I got the guy's card in my wallet, uh, Roger, Cardinal. Cardinal. Yeah. Um, Roger from, from the uh, Macomb County Elections Department. And I kept getting gray area responses and basically you have to talk to your attorney, we talked to the attorney and there does not appear to be any, any way of... So because we're a village, yeah. we were required to have an ordinance in place that allows because we're, an ordinance, uh, we're a village that doesn't have a charter. Doesn't we're governed right. by the Village Law Act, and that one doesn't. Okay. And of course, this ordinance would could pertain to anything. Mm -hmm. Right, yeah. Correct. Yeah, hopefully so. I don't even want that. You know. Yeah, it's not just a single, right. but it could pertain to any initiative that. that okay. Who would be responsible for writing the ballot measure if, if they were to garner enough um, signatures? Uh, the people who. Well, that would be. You, you can lay that on the ordinance. Yeah. So but typically, an initiative, an, an, in, an initiative setting, the, the people present the ordinance as drafted, presented, and then they, they basically act as the board to create the ordinance. And once it passes, the ordinance is created. And so theoretically, an ordinance could be created, which would open up extreme liability to the village. Could. It's the downside to having that open. But again, now you can you can draft it with certain restrictions. There's other ways there. There are several village communities that have those, but I will tell you the ones that do exist. They're very heavily restricted in, in what they allow. So we need to address the restrictions, the potential restrictions in the ordinance. Correct. Things that we may not want to. Do. Correct. Yeah, I, I'm not going to bring you something that. Okay. If it's your desire to have me bring you something, I wouldn't bring you anything that wouldn't, wouldn't, wouldn't be highly restricted. Of course, you could adjust it from there if you wanted, but that would be my goal. Okay. Right, so, so a table with So the motion would be to have you draft the ordinance and then we would then revisit and then go on as well or have it put on the restrictions? I could certainly start with something that I think is appropriate and bring it to you and then we can work on it from there. I would suggest that it might take a meeting or two to get it to where you want it. Um, you know, so that I, I can go through in detail with you and talk about it. And then I would suggest that you take the time on something like this to maybe have two or three go around and it. Do you need a motion for that? Support, right? no, no, I, uh, I motion for our uh, legal representation to draft an ordinance um, which would allow the um, residents to have the, uh, the ability to enact uh, initiatives and referendums. Second. They're probably moving and support it. Let the attorney um, draft the ordinance that would allow a citizen's initiative referendum or yeah, a draft. Just so I'm clear, I don't think it has to be in the motion, but that's for review by the board at a future meeting, correct? Yeah. Okay, correct. Any questions on the motion? So this is just a motion to draft the ordinance, not to adopt it or anything. No, correct, right. yes. Sure. So you can turn it down and that's that. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carried.
Ways and Means update. Yeah, the Ways and Means Committee met last Wednesday, and uh, it's going to be the first of quarterly meetings. Um, I asked that the Ways and Means Committee meet because I wanted to give the newest members just an outline of what Ways and Means is tasked with. Um, that's basically looking at the finances, the uh, financial health of the village, um, to look at ways of raising funds if we decide to, to go forward with any projects like parks or uh, more signs or. Um, but also, we can also do a quarterly review with Sandra of the budget, so if anything does have to be amended, we can make a recommendation to council. As you know, Ways and Means is just a committee. We can't vote on anything, but we can certainly review finances and make recommendations to council. So last Wednesday's meeting was just a, hi, this is what we're gonna do sort of thing, and familiarize ourselves with the budget. So um, if anybody has any questions of Ways and Means, any concerns? Uh, it's just for Coley, Trustee Hashik, and myself. We'll help whatever, whichever way we can. And the meetings will be quarterly, and everybody's invited. So, okay. and then the extra cemetery thing. Um, I did a walkthrough of our cemetery with a resident, and I have to admit, I was kind of stunned at the condition of the cemetery. It looks like a carnival set up camp and then just left. There's deflated balloons, there's broken plastic ornaments. Somebody's got an American flag hanging from a tree limb, which I'm pretty sure is a violation of federal law. Um, my question is, how often does the cemetery committee meet? I think you're on the cemetery committee? No, they're meeting Thursday of this week, I know. Thursday of this week? Um, okay, I, I don't know. I heard somebody said they had talked to you about something. Um, so do we? Do they have regular meetings set up? No, I'm going to say no, but they try to meet a couple of times a year, and I know there's a couple of things that are going to be on their agenda. Um, one is um, the encroachment of the size of some of these uh, Edges, bushes, yeah, the, trees. The ordinance says that you're entitled to the width of the grave out 18 inches. Okay. So it's three feet by 18 inches. Okay. And some of these decorations have taken on and encroached on the neighbor. <coughs> and so we're go they're going to be going through and identifying those graves, and we're going to be sending out an official letter to the loved ones saying, no, no. You got to shrink it back down, remove your park bench, remove your, you know. Broken plastic twinkly lights, there are a lot of them. Yeah, there there's a lot of solar lights out there. You can, yeah, you don't need a flashlight at night. Um, yeah, um, also, uh, I had a residents, um, a couple of residents reach out and say they were interested in serving on a couple of different committees. Can we get, um, when seats are, expire on planning commission ways of uh, planning commission uh the cemetery uh committee um to see if these other residents maybe wanted to participate and if there's any vacancies yeah. can we get that maybe the next meeting <laughs> <laughs> corinna i guess go look at it too <laughs> that's the keeper of the board keeper of the fact yeah can we find out the expiration dates of some of the seats because i'm really happy some residents are reaching out saying hey you know i'd really like to you know kind of look over what's going on and, and be a part of it so it's it's good news so if you could get that like a pass we we post that. i know there's a vacancy coming up on the housing committee because of uh, one of their members is moving out of area so there's a vacancy coming up on housing so there's housing planning, planning funeral i mean cemetery ZBA, ZBA, uh, Parks and Rec. Yeah, 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 Parks and Rec. I think those are the four. Yeah. So if we could get the term, you know, term limits and which seats, many seats are up, or if there are any vacancies, then I can kind of guess the real long people can apply for. Correct. Can I please also add a request of, of the names of the people who are on them? I know they're. I think they're on there somewhere on our website. Why not? But it would be nice, at least for council's sake, to get them all. Yeah, I think our website has them. 
I'm mistaken. It yeah. may not have the terms, but it, it should have the names. Yeah, they are. You can get yeah. Yeah, our consolidated. So can can we give you more? <laughs> okay. Uh, Mrs. President. That was it. Thank you. Call from the floor. Mr. Drake. Uh, a couple of things. Uh, I, I didn't understand what happened with the resolution, just so I understand it. So I'll be able to say the correct thing when I come to the board meeting on You ran out on the next month. I didn't understand what your... I wasn't able to print it and bring it for the board to approve so. You wasn't able to print it? Oh, okay. All right. Uh, I'll, I'll report it that <laughs> Um, okay, the other thing is that uh, I expected that to happen tonight, but anyway, I want to share with uh, the council and the other uh, offices that are here our uh, brand new hot off the press brochure, which is uh, all about uh, the history of the organization, the depot itself and the organization and uh, and the village so uh, there's a lot of good information on the uh, inside about that and the other thing is I think uh, Mark uh, you had called uh, you know I got in by you know, second and third hand information that you were interested in uh, one of the one of the I was books. curious if one of those if those books were available for yeah the and we have a few available uh, if you're interested in you, when you hear the price tag, you might change your mind. But uh, hundred bucks if you'd like to have one. Uh, Is that want this one? Sure. Okay. Does that, go to Is there a hmm? Does that go to you guys for boxes that you need? No, yeah, this is goes to the depot. Oh. I was uh, curious if it was available yeah. for the community. No, just yeah, no, no. This, this, this is a, uh, the historical society publishes them, and that will all of the songs go right back into the And they are available for purchase for any resident? Uh, we have uh, probably three more copies available. We're printing them regularly. We can't afford to print more than a few at a time because of, uh, you know, they're expensive to print. It costs us uh, almost 50 bucks just in uh, printing, not including the labor to do it. And that's with us providing the, uh, uh, you know, we, we supply the guts and then we have to send it out to a binder and you can get it put together. Okay, the only other thing I'd like to just to uh, uh, talk about just a little bit is this in response to uh, uh, something that Kevin had brought up, I believe at the last meeting, uh, he talked about uh, uh, needing to look for different revenue streams for the village and uh, but <clears throat> and I'd just like to remind that uh, Kevin that there are just aren't many revenue streams for uh, villages where there's you know it, it's about the only one you got really is the what you get back from the state revenue sharing plus uh, the taxes that we all pay uh, and if we were business maybe we could market uh, something else but there's just not many opportunities however the only one that's on the horizon now that i can see is uh the tax base uh potential from participating in uh the uh, medical marijuana program and um, i think that's a huge opportunity for a tax base and and that's all plus it's invisible and it's restricted to industrial areas for the growing operation and I'm not sure talking about the growing operations uh, the I had a chance to uh, just doing a little research for another for something else that I was working on I just uh, it reminded me that <clears throat> immediately all the property immediately to us south 
along the 26 mile road that falls to the Light Industrial Chesterfield Township. On the west, adjacent to just across Roselle, that's where Lenox Township has the bulk of their industrial uh, zone property. So, and then in addition, I, um, the, the rumor has it that uh, they both Chesterfield and Lenox are likely to uh, participate but at least in the growing portion of it, uh, anyway, in the, in the medical marijuana program. So, I guess, um, and that, and those areas are likely areas that uh, that would take place. Uh, Chesterfield has a lot of industrial area, but uh, they do have quite a few vacancies over here at the North Bay area, and leading up to the 26 mile road. So I, I just, I guess, I guess I throw that out as food for thought because uh, the, the, there is a, a good opportunity for revenue stream and permanent revenue stream because that's rooftops and square footage and that pays taxes and, as, and for light industrial development that is very low uh, in terms of uh, cost to uh, the village to have that versus other kinds of development, commercial or residential. Industrial is the least amount of uh, liability on, on the village. So uh, having said that, it's food for thought, and I, I just want you to take that into consideration when you're mulling over what you want to do about this whole issue. Mr. Kirk. Sure. Mm -hmm. uh, I'd be interested in the book. Oh, I just wanted to, to speak up, but I'd be interested. Oh, sure. Uh, you want? Yeah, we'll no one? Okay, I'll see that you. Uh, well, in fact, I better go tonight. I'll hire a couple and I'll get to you. Uh, either at the next meeting, I'll find you. I'll either I'll bring them here, but uh, you'll need to leave a check tomorrow. You, you know what I mean? <laughs> 100 bucks. Take cash too? Take a uh, make sure to no cash. Uh, Lennox New Haven Historical Society. Make check out this. Okay. It's on, it's the, right off the brochure. Uh, Excuse me. Thank you for moving. <laughs> all right, I know how hard all of you guys work for the village and all of the people. And I appreciate you guys passing those three items that are going to be on the ballot. But I want to tell you guys how disappointed I am that you guys didn't pass the other two and let the people make that choice. Because the people should have the option to make that choice. Okay, that's all. Call from the floor. Call from the table. I, uh, I guess I do. I also want to uh, express my disappointment with that. The others didn't pass, especially I was, uh, I kind of anticipated the provisioning centers maybe facing uh, uh, some steep uh, opposition, but I, I really didn't I think that the growers um, would, would uh, face that steep of opposition because, you know, there were a couple town halls and I thought the point was driven home pretty, pretty well that they're, again, they're, they're pretty much open to locate anywhere and as Mr. Drake uh, established, our southwest corner of the village is all industrial and there's been no development there at all. So it would only be, you know, and, and again, we could write the ordinance however we'd like. So we could restrict them only to industrial areas. Um, and they established very clearly at the town halls that they don't want to draw attention to themselves. As a grower, you know, they, they have valuable, a valuable commodity in there. They don't want people knowing, hey, we're here, we have, you know, one, one and a half million dollars worth of stuff here if you're interested. No, they want to be discreet, hidden, tucked away, and draw no attention to themselves. Uh, as the one guy mentioned, uh, I think, uh, I believe some of the representatives up here actually toured the facility uh, in Warren, I believe. Yeah. Um, you know, you wouldn't have known it. You wouldn't have known that they're a growing facility uh, from the outside. 
and I was disappointed that that wasn't passed. Um, like I said, I kind of kind of anticipated that uh, provisioning centers, which is uh, basically the uh, dispensary. dispensary, I kind of anticipated that it might not pass, but uh, I, I am also personally disappointed that that didn't pass as well. Um, again, I stress that if it were to pass, we could regulate it. The sky's the limit. And I think we could have, and again, we could have located, we could have restricted them, again, to the industrial area. Um, so I was, I was disappointed, and I think it was a missed opportunity for reasons that Mr. Drake said, as well as others that were established uh, either at the town halls or thereafter. Talk on the table. I just want to congratulate uh, Chief Z for his swearing in today. And the chief, and chief, yeah, yeah, I there are a couple things. The spring cleanup I noticed on the website is this third Friday and Saturday. Friday and Saturday. And then the River Days cleanup will happen before the next meeting because that's June 10th. June 10th. From 10 to 2. And if, I think it's on the website. And I think there's at least three or four different organizations that are going to partake in the river cleanup this year. And it should be, I don't know if it's posted yet or not, but uh, we just got confirmation from the Tigers that they've given us two game dates. June well, 15th. Yeah, it is posted. Has it been posted yet? I think that's been June 15th and August 23rd. Yeah, June 15th. So we'll be getting uh, 50 tickets uh, available to the public. <laughs> We'll provide transportation to uh, Comerica Park. Uh, the tickets are free of charge. Transportation is free of charge. How many seats? 50 tickets, first come, first serve. 50. First come, first serve. So you snooze, you lose. I'm sorry. You said it's already posted? It should be posted. It's on the website. It's on the website? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. I don't know if the sign-up sheet is on the end. The sign-up sheet is Call from the table. Any other call from the table? Take a motion to adjourn at 952. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Oh. Aye.